Hi everyone, my name is Alicia with Plant Addiction in East Central PA, Growing Zones 5B, 6A. If you like my videos, please subscribe and like. Today's topic is growing Monstera Deliciosa. It's uh, from the tropical rainforest. So if you think about tropical rainforest plants, you think about the environment they live in, it's warm, it's humid, and these plants do not uh, grow up in direct sunlight most of the time. They're usually an understory plant. Uh, they like bright indirect light. Uh, they grow well with medium to high light, but it must be indirect or it will burn the leaves. Okay, so these plants, they prefer a soil. These They, they grow on trees and other things. They're a type of epiphyte, so they will grow onto other things. So they need a soil that is loose and airy, that doesn't hold on to a whole lot of water. Uh, if you have them in a lot of soil that stays wet and muggy and boggy, they are going to rot. The, your leaves are gonna turn brown. It's just gonna deteriorate and die. So what I recommend for you is a soil that is two thirds of a chunky material like pine bark chips, uh, gravel, perlite, uh, at least two thirds of the mini bark chips. Um, then I would do one third of regular potting soil or compost mixed with that, especially if you live in a humid environment or one like in the Northeast here where there are winters um, can be very cold and damp. So, this way in the winter time, it's not sitting in wet, soggy soil in your house. Uh, it'll have a better chance of drying out and draining. So what you wanna do is if you were in uh, a, a, an environment like Arizona, where it's dry and everything, then you can change your soil compost to two thirds potting soil and one third bark chips or other kind of chunky material. Okay, so two thirds, bark chips or gravel or some kind of chunky material, perlite, something that's very well draining and doesn't retain water a whole lot. Um, if you're in a more humid environment, uh, if you're also, even if it's, if it's humid only in the summer, um, you may have to water maybe a slightly more in the winter time. Uh, I doubt it if you're in a humid area, but, um, you can change the soil mixture depending on your growing zone and environment. So I would suggest that if it's humid to add more of the chunky material, and if you live in a drier environment, add more of the potting soil or compost. So that's the best way to do it. That way it drains out very quickly. You want it to drain through, not quite as much as a cactus or something like that, but you want it to, not retain a lot of water in the end. You want the, the soil to stay moist, just not sitting with a lot of water in it, okay? So um, going back to the light, they really prefer a medium high indirect light, no direct sunlight. If you want them to grow well and get these beautiful fenestrations, um, as you can see here, they have the holes in here and the way the, this is a new leaf, so it's a little bit, a little bit delicate at the moment. But as you can see, how it gets the holes in it. The more light you give it, the more you'll get these, okay? So it'll start out when they're younger with these little heart-shaped leaves. And as it grows and it gets more light and everything, it'll turn into like this, and then eventually into these with enough light. The other thing is, as if you look at the base here, when they're young, they kind of grow like a little bush, but then they start kind of vining out and you're gonna to wanna to put a pole or a post or something to kind of rein them in or they're just gonna like sprawl out across, which can be quite nice actually. However, a lot of people want the leaves to get bigger and if you want to get bigger leaves, you need to stake it up and tie it up. And I will have other videos of me doing this with other, um, plants and different varieties, but it all works the same. It works with the Monstera, 
Uh, I'm going to do my Addisonii, uh, Pothos, uh, um, pictus. There's all kinds of different vining plants that when you stick them up and you grow them onto something, and especially when the aerial roots, if you look down here, these little air roots here, that grab on to whatever structure is nearby. And when it realizes that it has something to hang on to and it can grow, it's going to start shooting up. And when it does, it's also going to get bigger leaves that are going to keep going up and reaching for the light. So if you can do that, that is what most people really would want and would like in this plant, especially. This is what makes the months there so absolutely beautiful. The thing is, they can tolerate lower light levels. They can, but for a period of time, okay? So you don't want to keep them in low light constantly. Uh, if you can get it out um, into a medium or high light, uh, situation even once or twice a month for a few days it helps you don't have to uh, you can it can go months but sooner or later it will need to be in a medium to highlight situation you can have it in a lower light for the winter and then come spring and summer bring it out into some brighter indirect light or move it around somewhere closer to a window but with a sheer curtain over it, if it's in a east, south, or west facing window, especially south and west, you really want to have a sheer curtain like I do here on my windows. Um, so they, they really like to have the, the light as much as possible, but they can tolerate some lower conditions for a period of time. You can rotate a lot of your plants that way. You can take turns, have some in the lower light when the monstera is over in the more indirect higher light. You can bring some of those other plants that can tolerate a lower light and put it in the place in Monstera in the meantime. Or what I like to do, just have two Monsteras. <laughs> and then you can trade them out and you'll always have your Monstera there in that one spot and you'll just keep sw switching them back and forth uh, so that they each get a turn to get, you know, enough bright light um, to grow. Because, I mean, who couldn't, you know, love more Monstera in their life? <laughs> okay, so um, about fertilizing and water, okay? These plants like to really dry out. Now, not as much as a cactus, obviously, or a succulent, but they like to be very well drained. They like to keep their soil moist, but well drained. So if you let them dry out at least 50%, I would say, uh, in the winter, if you're in a, a humid, wet, uh, cold and damp type environment, uh, let them dry out even more. In the wind on the winter time only uh, in the summertime the spring and summer if you're not drain it through so it comes out the bottom during the summertime but in the winter time cut way back otherwise you're going to end up rotting it out the leaf edges are going to turn brown they'll start getting fungal infections and they're just not going to look very pretty they're going to decline rapidly uh, if you're in the drier environments um, you can water them more often but i would still let them dry out 50 percent and just do like maybe you know a little bit less than you would do in the summer uh watering if you're watering every other day in the summer i would cut every two or three days depending on how fast it dries out you always want to check i like to use a moisture meter because especially with bark chips and stuff it's really hard to tell how moist it is so i like to use a moisture meter uh, and when it gets down into the red area that says it's dry, I will then water it. And if it's the summertime, I will water it all the way through. And if it's the winter time, I will only add about two cups of water into this planter here. Um, actually, this one here is a smaller one. This one I would probably do like a cup or a cup and a half of water in this size planter. Um, my bigger one, I would do two cups, the bigger ones, um, just to keep it moist, but not drench it and where it's sitting in a lot of water. That you definitely do not want to do with any of these, including your philodendrons, the exact same way. Any of your philodendrons, you want to just try to keep them moist, but not soaking wet and not like super, like completely bone dry. 
but pretty close, <laughs> okay, before you water them again. All right, fertilizer, I use a, um, I use, actually use water from my fish tank. Uh, it's great for them, they love it. Uh, I just use the, straight from my fish tank, but if you don't have a fish tank, uh, rainwater works really good. Now I know a lot of people don't want to be collecting rainwater. You can use distilled water. You can use regular tap water. However, the distilled water and the rainwater, um, it works a lot better, I think, but you can also, you can also use your tap water. Just add uh, a quarter strength of a liquid fertilizer like every other week or half strength of the fertilizer at once a month. And this is only during the growing season. Don't, don't fertilize it in the, in the fall or the winter. Um, it's not really going to be growing unless you keep your home temperatures exactly the same and it's still growing. If it's still growing and you still see new shoots coming out and your house is warm and it's humid, then just keep fertilizing then. But if not, you need to stop the fertilizing, cut back on your watering in the winter and wait until the spring to start fertilizing again. Um, they are a little bit sensitive to salts. So that's why you don't want to do full strengths. You want to do in quarter strengths or half strengths and only uh, quarter strength every two weeks at the most. Uh, and your half strength once a month at the most. And that's even quite a bit, but you will notice that they will perk up a lot and grow a lot for you doing that. So uh, it helps them quite a bit. And it also helps them green up a lot better too. Uh, the other thing is, is these air roots. Some people don't like the air roots. Uh, they can be kind of unruly. I wrap mine around in the pot if you can. Um, sometimes they stick out and they crawl across the floor. Now, if you allow them to touch the surfaces, they will stick and damage some of your surfaces. So you can pick them up and put them in a, in another like pot just to set them in. Uh, you can try to guide them around your stake if you have a stake in there to hold them up. Um, some people don't like them at all and they cut them off. It doesn't hurt anything. They're just there to help the plant climb and grow and for sturdiness of the plant. So it's not cutting off any of their food or water or anything like that. Um, they just use it as a support for the plant. So you don't, you don't have to have them. Uh, I let them go for the most part, unless there's a wily one that tends to like reach out and, uh, you know, start raining kids in <laughs> and start eating the kids. And I might, I, I might trim it back just a little bit enough so that it's not sticking out there real far and, you know, tripping people or that kind of thing. Um, so the other thing you want to do is clean the leaves. Okay, this one is due for it. They get really dusty. They get really dirty. I left this here so you could see. I don't know if you can see the, the white spots on here. Uh, this was outside for a while and even outside in the rain, it still gets these little white spots on it. That it's not powdery mildew or any kind of disease. It's just from dirt and dust and things in the air. So what I like to do is I like to take some neem oil because um, neem oil is also a, um, it helps with funguses and in insects and things like that. And these will get some pests, especially if they're outside, they'll get some pests. Uh, you can easily fix that by using some neem oil. Uh, it's, it's more, works better as a preventative, but it does help. And if you take some neem oil, follow directions and just put some on a rag, um, and Put it on the rag first and then wipe your leaves with it. Your leaves will be super shiny. They'll look like this. Um, and they'll stay looking like this for quite some time. Um, they make them really shiny, but the, here, the, here, the main benefit of it is that it keeps not only the dirt and dust off of it, but it also keeps the pests and funguses and things like that away. So you're kind of, it's kind of like a three for one type. So you get clean leaves and it helps with fungus and insects if you get any. Um, now some people don't like, but don't like to use stuff like that, but the neem oil is pretty safe to use. Um, it has a little bit of a funny smell to it. 
but for the most part, uh, it's very beneficial to use it. So this plant is actually due for it. And I literally just take it, put it on a rag, and then I just wipe the leaves off. Don't forget the backs. Okay, you, you want to use the backs too. You want to get the backs clean. A lot of people forget about the backs, but there's a lot of insects and stuff that will end up on the backs of your leaves and you won't even notice them, especially stuff like spider mites. Spider mites are so tiny and so difficult to see that you can have them and not even notice them until you start seeing webs. Well, by the time you start seeing webs, you've already got a huge infestation and now it's probably on your other plants as well. So that's all I have to say for today. Other than these are beautiful plants, they're wonderful. They're very easy to take care of once you understand what you need to do. And a lot of the care that you have for this uh, works the same with a lot of your other tropical plants. So if you can master taking care of these, you can pretty much master most of your other tropical plants. Now there are, you know, there's always ones that are a little bit more difficult than others. Uh, especially with watering is always an issue, but a lot of your philodendrons have the same care as the monstera here. So uh, I really highly recommend uh, growing at least one of these, if not more, if you have the space for it. Okay. If you like my video and my instructions, please subscribe and like. Thank you.